So to be completely honest, it, it was it was much more his decision to break up with me than it was mine to leave him. Oh, that sucks. I took it a lot harder. I was drinking every day. Well, I, I think I've convinced myself as well that he still loves me, but I don't. I, I know he doesn't. We've no, had we've had conversations, anything. and he's told me very horrible things. As far, I, I, I say horrible, not nasty, but he's told me the truth. It was a mutual thing that we had to get out of it, mm. but at the end of it, I was much more affected than he was. So did he find He was like, I think he, he, when I shut that door, he probably went whistling and skipping down the street in joy, really? which is a horrible really? feeling, really. Do you know that, or are you just saying that? I know that. Why, were you horrible? No, I just, I had become not a, not a mean person, but I think all of the things... Because you're suspicious all the time. Well, no, what I'm, what I'm referencing is the things that have happened in my life that are so traumatic to somebody I never dealt with. And so I became not a nice person to be around. Mm -hmm. And Jake had to put up with it 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And he was saying to me, you need to go get help. You need to go see a therapist. You need to work through your issues. Yeah. I, I tend to more cover up my pain than deal with it with mm -hmm. alcohol. Um, and did that? And that's it. I did wasn't. That drive, did that then drive him into the arms of other guys? Is that why yes, he did that? Yes, a hundred percent. Right. So Do not only yourself? not only on reflection, not only on reflection, am I upset? But I also think this is kind of my fault. Mm. And so grappling with those two feelings that are that are very intense feelings that can drive that I know have driven people to suicide have driven people to you know drugs and alcohol oh, I, I was one of those people I just knew he wouldn't want any sentiment of me around when I say that out loud I don't think I've really said that out loud to myself before mm. it's 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 a really shit place to be. That's why, that's why I just try and not even listen to myself. Your brother um, died in a car crash. Yeah. At age 27. Correct. And he was very, but it, it was a direct result of the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. He was an infantryman with the U.S. Army, mm -hmm. and he did 17 months in Iraq. He came home severely affected with post-traumatic stress disorder, and instead of giving him back surgery, which would have been $40,000 or more, they decided to just pump him full of pain pills. Presumably, from all the facts, he fell asleep at the wheel, crossed over, and got hit on by a semi-truck or a lorry. You know, it, it was harder to take care of my brother than to take care of someone who's mentally disabled or physically disabled. Because not only do they have massive issues, they can have flashbacks, they have loaded weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, most PTSD doctors will say, unless they're suicidal or homicidal, don't take away their guns. So I would wake up in the middle of the night, 3 o'clock in the morning, my brother, who's been up now for 72 hours, would be standing at the foot of my bed with a loaded 9mm Smith & Wesson. Hollow point bullet, so it would have killed me in one shot. But like I said, I knew that was my brother. Why was he standing there with that gun? What was the reason? Because I, when I moved back to my parents' house to take care of my brother who lived with them, I took his old room. And so, so it wasn't, it, so was, it was, no, was nothing ever threatening, mm -hmm. but it was simply... I'm not meaning this in a flippant way, but that's pretty threatening. No, I completely agree, but, I mean? but he, he went everywhere with his gun. Right. So no matter where he was, if he was asleep or if he was awake or if he was going to the grocery store, he always had his weapon. Mm -hmm. My family all carry firearms. We're all trained. We all, we all know gun safety and we all carry weapons back home. If, if a lion is purring... That's not threatening, but you know that that lion in one second could get up and bite your face off. I mean, my brother and I had long talks, and he said, I would never take my own life. I would never leave you guys with that aftermath to clean up. Mm -hmm. um, however, my old, eldest brother and my dad and I were like downstairs playing cards or something, and we had a gun, heard a gunshot go off in my brother's room. And we all three walked up there, the door was closed, and I was at the front of the pack, and I just said, I, I can't walk in here first. Mm -hmm. If I see what I think is on the other side of that door, 
I won't be able to handle it. Mm-hmm. And so my eldest brother stepped up and he goes, okay, let, let me go in. And Tyler was there and he was with his weapon flustered. And he goes, oh, sorry, I was cleaning it. And it was an accidental discharge. And so the bullet went, went through his, the, he lived above the garage, went through into the, into the refrigerator in the garage. Mm-hmm. So had my mom been out there like grabbing a Diet Coke, she'd, she'd probably be dead right now. Did you love your brother? To bits. Tyler was an amazing human being, like would give you the shirt off his back, um, was my best friend up until 18. There's people to blame, you know. The, the, yeah, but you know, the, forget the blame. How, how, like, how do you feel about, how, how, do you, how do you cope? Forget blame. How do you cope with the fact that you love someone who's gone? I cut off that emotion. I, I've become, and that's part of the problem why my marriage dissolved, was because I just became an asshole. I was angry. I'm angry. I'm bitter. I'm upset. I do look for people to blame because there are people to blame. It catches me at the strangest times. You know, when I do something, when I do a big project or a big photo shoot and I'm like on cloud nine, I think, ah, man, I really wish Tyler was here to see me and be proud of me. And He would be. Mm. Yeah. He would be proud of you. I can't, uh, I, I... I can't go into all that emotion right now, though. But it's been so many nights, sleepless nights of crying and wondering why. And so I've just put those... Those questions will never be answered. So I don't try and think about it too much Mm. because he's gone. And that's, that's, that's a fact that I have to live with and that's something that I've accepted. Yeah. Let's move on. Your mum was sent to prison. Mm. We won't go into in great, in a, you know, in, in kind of too much detail, but it was quite a large sum of money that was stolen from her employer. Mm. And she was sent to prison for a number of years. Well, what, what many people don't realise, that money was going to support my brother. He was, he was getting no benefits from the army. He was getting no benefits from the government. So my mom was stealing from her job to support my brother, who had served the, our country for 17 months. And, what was, and what, was, what was the money going on? It was, I mean, it was almost $700,000, wasn't mm, it? Yeah. So what's that? His, his rent? His food? His... Rent, car, food. Mm-hmm. It was excessive. I, I admit that. It was, it was much more than he would have ever needed. Did but you... it snowballed. And so once she started, once she realized she could get this amount, she'd go for that amount. Did you know that she was doing that while she was doing it? Or was that hidden from you? It was hidden from me. And I was told that my grandmother, my dad's mom who had passed away, left me a large amount of money because she would give me some money as well. I was investigated and I was questioned for hours by the police. And it must have been terrifying. I, mean, I can't imagine how that felt. Obviously, there was a massive amount of betrayal that I felt from her. But at the same time... The ultimate goal was she thought she was helping my brother. She genuinely thought she was helping him. She got out last summer. She got out last I got, summer. I saw her five days before I, before I came to London to mm-hmm. film Celebrity Big Brother. So you lost your brother in horrible circumstances and then you weren't able to see your mum, hold your mum, get a cuddle, talk to her when you needed to. Yeah. That's, that's what made me go, right, I've got to deal with my dad, I've got to deal with my mom, I've got to deal with the aftermath of losing a family member. I just said, I don't have time to be upset about the things that have happened. When do you get to be upset? I haven't yet. You There's times said, where I get emotional. You just, you just said to me, and I completely understand why, to know now is not the time for me to cry about this. You also said that at night, you cry. I still cry because it's something that's happened and he's gone. I don't like to show vulnerability. I completely accept that that's those part issues, of life. Those issues were given to you though. For goodness sake, she lost your brother in horrible circumstances. Your mum went to prison. You've been through an awful lot. You know, romantically as well, you've been through a huge amount. No one in their right mind would begrudge you from being really emotional and having a lot of shit to deal with right now. Professional help, I think, is my next step. It's that or drink. <laughs> Those times.
times where I'm most vulnerable and on my own, mm -hmm. I will look in the mirror and go, you have every right to feel this way. Mm -hmm. Have you drunk today? No. No, I'm off the booze for a while. Oh, 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 o